Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm here with Pastor Mark from USA uh, with us and he has got a story to tell. We are doing a spiritual leadership training in Nepal and this is our kitchen dining table. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for your time, Pastor Mark. Oh yes, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so stay with us. I'll be asking um, questions related to his ministry. And also, we want to we want to receive uh, encouragement for young pastors like us, like me. So, um, Pastor Mark, will you mind telling me your name, your family? Well, my stuff. Yeah, my name is is Mark Waite, mm -hmm. and uh, I am married to Nancy. Have been married for thirty one years. In fact, our anniversary was just a couple days ago. Oh wow! And uh, oh, thank you. We have uh, seven children uh, scattered all over the globe. Uh, many of them serving the Lord in full time ministries. We have a couple children that are still at home, and that we're still f raising and praying that God will take them and use them for His glory. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, uh, one of his his son was my classmate, and through him I came to know him, and he was a pastor at a church. And he is a great mature person, so I have a great respect for a person like him. But uh, my four questions will be: first one, how he was called in pastoral ministry; second one is how church members can their assist their pastors; and of course, he's human, and we need to pray for him. And also, we want to receive great encouragement from him. So, Pastor Mark, um, how you? were called to pastoral ministry and also how long have you been serving? Well, I started pastoral ministry in 1986. 1986. 1986, yeah. after I, my wife and I graduated from Bible college. Mm -hmm. As far as my call to pastoral ministry, um, after I had left the home, uh, after I had graduated from high school, I went to uh, the Coast Guard, United States Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I was at my first duty station in Kodiak, Alaska, mm -hmm. I met a pastor there in a small Baptist church. Mm -hmm. And that pastor took a great interest in me. Mm -hmm. um, he spent time teaching me. Uh, when he would go fishing or hunting, he would take me with him. <laughs> I thought we were just fishing and hunting, but what we, he was doing was discipling me. Oh, wow. Um, he showed me how he preached his messages. When he would visit the sick in the hospital, he would take me with him. Mm. And over a period of three years, I began to do what he was doing. It was oh, a very wow. gradual process. Uh -huh. And when I got ready to leave Kodiak for my next duty station, I just thought to myself, I like this. I <laughs> okay. enjoy this. I did not have a great experience in which God told me to become a pastor. I did not see a vision. I did not hear a voice. Um, I did not have a verse pop out at me and tell me that I needed to do this. I just had an intense desire and enjoyment of that kind of work. So that happened through that pastor. That happened through that pastor. Yeah, he simply discipled me and equipped me. I think he saw in me the potential to be a pastor. Mm. And so he began to develop me. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that at the time. Mm -hmm. But now I look back and I can see that's what he was doing. Oh, wow. um, and, and I think that, you know, Paul says in uh, one of his letters that, you know, he was constrained to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, he had a burden to preach the gospel. And, and I think that's what I had mm. um, through his training and, and teaching. A burden developed in my heart that I wanted to share what I was learning with other people. And I wanted to preach the gospel. I wanted to disciple. I wanted to be involved in church leadership. And so I began to pursue that. And, and, and the next thing that happened is God began to open doors. Oh, wow. So there was no 
loud voice or thunder or your hair turn into white or <laughs> something like that? <laughs> it, it's, it's taken uh, 50 some years for my hair to turn white, start turning white. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's not sudden. No, no, uh, no. So how long have you been serving as a pastor? Well, I, again, I started in 1986, um, and that has not been all continuous mm -hmm. service as a pastor. I did take some time where I taught in a Christian school for three years. Mm. Um, I have also, when my father became very ill, I needed to come home and help care for uh, him and my mother. And so during that period of time, I actually became a police officer. <laughs> okay. But I was always ministering in the church. Um, so as far as continuous pastoral ministry, it's been about 20-some years. 20-some years. Yeah. And also you've been a uh, missionary for, yes. for how many years? Uh, I have been in missions uh, for seven years. Yes. Overseas mission. Overseas. Uh -huh. Oh, in, wow. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have been serving for a long time and you, have, you love people. Yes. So... These people, they are in the church, they have a strong desire to support their pastor as well. But sometimes they don't know. If you have to tell me, hey, you can help your pastor this way, assist your pastor this way, what will be your suggestion to believers? You know, I, 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 I have some things that are going to sound very spiritual, then I have some that are going to be very practical. Okay. Okay. And, and really, they, there should be no difference between the spiritual and the practical. It's oh, all okay. spiritual. Uh -huh. uh, I think, number one, pray for your pastor. Uh, mm. Pray for him. You know, mm. I, it, if you're praying for your pastor, when he makes a mistake, you're not going to be so apt to become angry with him and upset mm. with him. It's hard to, to get angry with a person that you're praying for on an everyday basis. Pray for his success. Pray for his study in the Word of God. Pray for his preaching. Uh, pray for his dealings with people. Um, that will help the, your pastor, but it will also help your heart as, as your, your heart grows to love your pastor. Hmm. I've always told my, church, my churches as well is to love the pastor's kids, wife and kids. Hmm. I, I always tell them, the greatest thing you can do for me is to love my family. And especially to love my children. Mm. Um, and so most of my churches have done that. They have loved my children. Um, you know, God tells us to love each other. Right. So what makes God happy is when we love his kids. Mm. And that's what makes me happy. When a church <laughs> loves my, my family, loves oh, my yeah, children. Right, right. Um, I, I think another thing that churches can do for pastors is uh, make sure that their day off is really their day off. They need time off, too. They need time to recharge their batteries. They need time to think. They need time to get away for a little bit. And so it's good for a church to, to make sure that if the pastor has one day that, that's his day off, mm -hmm. that that is a day that, that he can spend with his family. Mm -hmm. and, and we all know that emergencies happen, oh, and, yeah. and good pastors are going to be happy to drop everything and, and get to that emergency. We right. understand that. Right. But most of the time, uh, in the routine of ministry, it's good to make sure your pastor has time off. Now, mm -hmm. another thing you can do, some pastors are workaholics, and, <laughs> okay. and, and they will not take a day off. And I yeah. think in that case, that the best thing the church can do for that pastor is make him take some time off. Make him take time with his family. Mm -hmm. uh, expect that of him, because in the long run, when I look at my family, I tried to spend as much time with my children as I could. Uh -huh. Most of my ministry was bivocational. Uh -huh. So I, I was a pastor at day and I was a police officer at night. Oh, wow. And so I didn't have a lot of time. But the churches gave me as much time as they could uh -huh. to devote to my family. Oh, wow. So I think those are things that, that a church can do for their pastor. Mm, wow. So uh, I really like what you said. It's harder to get angry, the person who pray, you know, you pray regularly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep that in mind, because when you have a pastor who takes rest, and he is recharged, 
we get better ministry as well mm-hmm. because when mm-hmm. he is all <laughs> drained out right mm-hmm. it's hard okay um of course uh, there are people who wants to pray for you mm-hmm. and for your family mm. and for your ministry too mm-hmm. uh what are the challenges or struggle you are facing right now in your life wow well you know one of the struggles that i have faced throughout my life mm-hmm. um is is contentment contentment yeah i you know i i look at paul when he says i have learned to be content in every state that i am mm-hmm. and uh that is a challenge for me i uh, am a person who tends to want to try new things all the time mm-hmm. and and if there is a maybe a regret in my ministry is that that i i perhaps wanted to try too many new things and mm-hmm. it would have been better to have maybe stayed in one place longer and mm-hmm. so that's a that's a battle that i have um the the battle of of trying to be content with my situation with my ministry with my circumstances mm-hmm. um so that is an area mm-hmm. of prayer i think another area of prayer for me now at, at this stage of my life i'm 58 years old Mm-hmm. um have come back from the united uh from africa to the united states and uh lord willing and going to go back into a pastoral ministry mm-hmm. and it's very difficult to come from the third world and third world missions and churches and step back into a us pastorate mm-hmm. um because things are different oh yeah um you're coming from very poor to usually very rich at least by the world standards mm-hmm. and uh so i so i need prayer for that kind of an adjustment mm-hmm. um i think being secure with who i am in christ um not comparing myself with other pastors not comparing myself with um uh, other ministries mm-hmm. um you know that's that's an area of prayer for me yeah thank you for sharing that one mm-hmm. so or people can pray for your contentment and also they can pray for your adjustment to hopefully for this new church mm-hmm. uh, ministry situation yeah okay thank you still you are with us and we are thankful for you and we hope and we desire that it will be encouragement for you but uh, still i have more question hmm. so pastor mark um If you know there are many uh, young pastors they desire to be pastor mm-hmm. and at the same time there are many many pastors they are getting or uh, they are fading away from the pastoral ministry. Mm. Um my personal prayer is we want pastoral coming in the right way and also we want to see pastor suffering mm-hmm. and staying in the ministry mm-hmm. to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, what will be your wisdom to young pastors like me? Mm. I I think um one of the things that I would say is is to develop the culture of your inner man. And what I mean by that is to spend as much time as you can training yourself for godliness. I I think that pastors involve themselves in a lot of different things especially when they're new pastors. Mm-hmm. And the one area that perhaps gets neglected is our own spiritual development. Mm. I I think I would advise pastors to to really learn the Bible. You you know, you you've learned in Bible college, maybe you've been to seminary and you've had 3 or 4 years of seminary training. Mm-hmm. But you know, a lot of that training is about the Bible. It, it's uh-huh. it's it's about theology it's about the bible it's about ministry in in your first years of of ministry and throughout your ministry now learn the bible now get into the bible and instead of reading all the books read the bible mm. um you know i try to read through the bible as many times as i can in the course of a year and it has greatly benefited me the the other thing is memorize scripture you know you as a young pastor you're you're trying to get used to everything your brain is still filled with everything you've learned make room in your life to memorize blocks of scripture 
They are the ammunition that the Holy Spirit will use in your life to fight the satanic attacks that will come against you. Those attacks may be discouragement, depression, uh, disillusionment with the ministry. They can also be immorality. Mm. Um, you, know, you know, pastors need to defend themselves against those attacks. And I tell all new pastors at their ordination this, is that now they have a big red bullseye painted on them. They have now stepped into service. Mm -hmm. They are leading a flock mm -hmm. and Satan desires to destroy their reputation and their ministry so that he can scatter that flock. Mm -hmm. He is the man Satan will be shooting at. And so I, I, I would advise young pastors, be alert. Be alert. Don't allow yourself to be drawn into those kinds of sins that are going to destroy mm. your ministry, that are going to bring ruin to your reputation, and that are going to uh, dishonor the Lord. So that's what I think. Be in the Word. Pray. Don't neglect prayer. Mm. I, I, think, I think the tendency with pastors, we, we always preach the spiritual disciplines. Hmm. Telling our people, you know, you need to be praying, reading your Bible, memorizing Scripture, all those things. Hmm. I think that pastors may be the, the guys that need to do that the most and are doing that the least because they're so busy. Hmm. So don't oh. neglect those things. Uh, what uh, Scripture person are you memorizing these days? I am memorizing... Uh, I should have brought down my, my cards to to show you right now i am working on uh, i just started romans chapter six um haven't gotten very far in that so uh, are you doing chapter by chapter i, I sometimes do chapters um, mm -hmm. most of the time it's it's blocks of verses um you know just finished up uh the the, the fruit of the spirit galatians 5 16 through 25. oh wow um but usually it's blocks of, of passages that I will I will memorize and uh, I'll write those verses on cards and then I will go out and usually I walk I love to walk I try to walk about 10 miles a day <laughs> oh, wow. and that is my time to go through my my memory cards um, and pray and, and let me just say that I have just been ministered to in my soul through memorizing scripture hmm. Now, and, and I need to say this, it was my little brother that got me doing that. My little brother probably, he's, he's a, an older man too, he's in his 50s, but he probably has much of the New Testament memorized. Wow. So, so you compete each other memorizing scripture? Then? <laughs> I will never be able to catch up to him, but, oh, okay. uh, yeah, but he's the one who really spurred me on to that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, can you remember maybe one memorized scripture and would you like to say it out right now? Oh, sure. Oh, let me see which one I want to say. Um, well, it's hard. Once you get put on the spot, you're going to try to remember. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's good. Let's see. Let me find the one. That, I'm trying to think of one. Let me do 1 John 2, 15 through 17, because I think this is one that, that, that we get caught up in. Do not love the world, nor the things in the world. Hmm. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You can't love the world and the Father at the same time. Hmm. Wow. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. That verse helps me every day to make sure that I am loving God and not loving the world because I can't love both at the same time. And so that's one that I remind myself of and my people of and my children of all the time. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, so thank you for staying with us. And as I told you, um, he has raised great kids. And I am really encouraged by you know seeing his kids, and one of them is missionary in one place, and another one is getting ready to go to uh, another another mm -hmm. country. Yes, and also there are more. 
Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I have I have three serving in one country, uh -huh. and then uh, my son, who you know, he and his family will be leaving for another country here right. soon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it will be great uh, uh, to pray for our pastors. Uh, would Would you mind to pray for our young pastors? Oh, my pleasure. Father, we, we just thank you that you allow us to serve as co-laborers with you mm -hmm. in your harvest field. Yes. Father, you say that the harvest fields are white and they are ready for, for harvest and that uh, they just lack workers and that we should pray to you that you will supply those workers. And Father, you are supplying those workers, young pastors who are eager to serve you, eager to see souls saved and discipled, and churches grow and planted. And so I pray for these workers, I pray for these young pastors and old pastors alike, all of us, that Father, you will place your hand of protection upon these men and that you will continue to remind them that the primary goal in their life is to know and love and glorify you. And Father, that their ministry is going to flow out of those things. That as they come to know you and love you and worship you with a greater intensity and passion, that they're going to have a greater ministry because their ministry will flow out of their worship. So help them, Father, to become worshipers. Help mm. them to uh, become men who really, truly uh, know the word for more than a sermon, but for their life. And Father, I pray that you will just guide them and guard them minister to their families, Father, hmm. and may they experience your abundant grace and be able to say, as Paul said, that your grace is sufficient for them. Hmm. And we will yes. thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you, Pastor Mark, and we would like to say bye right now and see you next time.